What's up fellow fiends and fans of Halloween? I'm Ben, the Halloween Hoarder, and in this video we're doing part two of our Halloween mail haul unboxing. If you haven't seen part one, check it out. There's a lot of cool merch from this Halloween season. If this is your first time on the channel, welcome to the Horde. If you love Halloween, consider subscribing because I have so much more to show you. And if you're already subscribed, thank you so much. I truly appreciate you. In part two, I have 15 boxes to open up. You're gonna see die cuts, blow molds, and more. All right, let's jump right into it. This first box comes from my friend Sarah back home in San Diego. I think she sent me a treat. Let's see what's inside. It's Ben proof. It's $250 in dimes. It's a McNugget. This is from McDonald's. Looks to be vintage 90s. This is the Dracula McNugget. Complete with all accessories. <laughs> and his hairdo with a bat. Yeah, the nugget is date stamped with 1992. This is vintage 92 vampire McNugget from McDonald's. Super cool. Thank you, Sarah. I hope you're doing well. Say hi to Sparky for me. This Drac Nugget has a home with all the other Halloween nuggets I've collected so far. All right, the next package is flat. I'm assuming it's a die cut. If you recognize that ghost stamp and you have a PayPal receipt to Ursico Toys, then you've been shopping with the Vintage Halloween store on Instagram. This dude always ships super safe and fast. I've been buying stuff from him for years. Super cool guy. Always want to be careful when you're opening a package with die cuts in it, especially vintage ones. Look at that. This is a vintage die cut from the 30s by Denison. There's some tape and some, some pinholes in it, but still such a beautiful die cut. And if you don't know already, jack lanterns are my absolute favorite. You can tell this was probably out of school. It says grade one short, written in crayon on the back. Still, what a magnificent piece of history. Oh, it looks like some treat bags as well. Oh yeah, look at these. Vintage Halloween paper treat sacks. I love the art on these. <laughs> pretty pristine. So the bigger one is from Union Camp. You can see the stamp there on the bottom. The other small treat sacks are from Fun World. And you can see the stamp on the bottom there. Super cool. Thank you so much, man. Hope you're doing well. This appears to be another die cut. This would be from an eBay purchase. Two vintage die cuts from DJB. I don't know a whole lot about DJB, but these appear to be early 80s to me. They're unpunched and still have the UPC codes on them with a price tag of 59 cents. Double-sided. With the color and how they're double-sided, that's what makes me think they're from the 80s because they don't have brown backings on them. Those are the really old die cuts. But these are in great condition. I love the bright orange on these and the green. Jack-o'-lantern and a skeleton saying, hello. Those are two awesome eBay finds. I regularly check eBay. A lot of stuff is way overpriced, but sometimes you can find a good deal. And when you do, you make the purchase. Well, already some cool die cuts have joined the hoard. This is another box from Vintage Halloween Store, Ursico Toys. Let's see what's in this box. Nice. What a happy sight. These are two vintage blow molds from Empire Plastics from the early 80s in their original packaging. Amazing. 
There's a third tabletop blow mold from that same year from Empire. It's a little orange witch. I have that as well. So now a complete set of these tabletop vintage blow molds from Empire Plastics. I am not gonna open these up. I prefer them to stay in their wrapped up plastic. If you have the OfferUp app, you can look for Halloween stuff around your neighborhood. Also, there are some sales on there that people will ship to you. This box came from Illinois. Let's see what's inside. Looks like burritos. Yes. Speaking of Empire blow molds, these were old path markers, blow mold path markers from Empire Plastics. I don't see a date stamped on here, but I'm confident these are from the 90s. This is the vampire. With some blood soaked fangs. This is another vampire. This is the monster holding a chain, rocking a purple jacket and an orange shirt and a super stylish flat top. This one's in great condition. Hardly any scuffing or fading on this one. Oh, a little bit on the nose. Another monster. A third monster, a fourth monster. Don't tell me it's all monsters and vampires. Hoping for a pumpkin. Yes, there it is. Mr. Jack-o-lantern. <laughs> These are missing the lights and some of the bases are broken. I believe there was a stand that you would clip them into that would go into the ground and there would be a light that goes inside. Oh, this one has a date stamp on it, 1998. Yeah, 90s, these are from the late 90s. Empire Plastics, super cool. Four monsters, two vampires, and one jack-o'-lantern man. Now these bases, you can unscrew and take off so that they'll sit flat on a tabletop or on a shelf which is probably what I end up doing with these. Such a rad find on OfferUp. Very happy. Should have kept that box. I should have kept the box over here, guys. All right, the next box may or may not be Halloween. This is from Loot Fright. If you've ever heard of Loot Crate, they do a Loot Fright edition where it's basically a box of a lot of exclusive horror-related stuff. And I love horror movies and I love Halloween. I don't consider them the same thing. But since it's October, I'm thinking it might be Halloween, so I'm gonna open it up on the channel. You get the first peek. All right, what do we get? There's something from A Clockwork Orange. It's a milk bottle. <laughs> Next item is the Lost Boys. It says Lost Boys Snack Bowl. It says One of Us. And it looks like the bridge where they were hanging down there. There's the roller coaster and the Ferris wheel. It says Santa Carla China Palace since 1987. And it has the bottle of blood that they drink. You're eating maggots. So far, no Halloween merchandise. So if you're just here for the Halloween, I apologize. Let's rip through the rest of this box.
There is a Toonie Terrors Leatherface action figure, Loot Crate Edition. That's pretty cool. And lastly, there is a tote bag or an apron. This looks like an apron. Probably from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah, it says family owned and operated since 1974. It is blood spattered and there's a chainsaw on there. I believe this to be an apron from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Well, speaking of horror, this is from Terror Visions Records. Terror Vision Records makes some really cool original soundtracks on vinyl from horror movies, as well as pins and cassettes and t-shirts, all kinds of merchandise. So let's see what's in here. Oh, it has a miracle fortune telling fish. You ever seen one of these before? Place fish in palm of the hand and its movements will indicate. All right, let's see what it does. <laughs> well, he curled in half. That says curls up entirely. That indicates passionate. There's a pixie stick. I haven't had one of those since I was very young. Pure sugar. There is an enamel pin. It looks like a cassette tape in the shape of a coffin. It says RIP. And there's a t-shirt. Video Violence was an indie horror movie from the 80s. So this package came with a shirt and an LP. And the LP is the original soundtrack of the movie. And that's what I love about 80s horror movies is all the synth wave. So I'm assuming this is gonna be some, some dark synth on here. There's a yellow and pink splattered vinyl. If you're into 80s and 90s horror movies, check out TerraVision. They put a lot of soundtracks onto vinyl as well as t-shirts and pins, other merchandise. If you're here for the Halloween, I'm sorry, there was some horror related stuff in there. This big box says Gus the Ghost. These are from ESC and Company. A couple months ago, I'd never heard of the ESC company, but I was flipping through eBay, looking at Halloween stuff, and it recommended me a figure by ESC, and I thought it was so cool, I checked out the, the actual website of the company, and let's see what's in this box. Should I just dump it over? All right. It's packed safely. This box says Pumpkin Carver from ESC. Let's see what's inside. Packed in styrofoam. These are solid resin reproductions uh, from handmade art by Charles McClenning that he makes the originals with clay paper and they cast them in resin. CR McClenning Studio. That one was called Pumpkin Carver. Let's see what's next. This one says Headless Horseman. holding a lantern and his head made of pumpkin. Those pumpkin faces are so unique. I will get close-ups of all these at the end of the video. Is this driving anybody crazy? All this popcorn on here? There you go. 
This next box says Gus the Ghost. This little guy is dressed up in a sheet with little bats and pumpkins painted on it, holding a treat sack with a cat painted on it. All these pieces sculpted by C.R. McLennan are part of a series called Halloween County. And I got these directly from the ESC website. This box says Matt the Mummy. like a little terrified pumpkin face holding a lantern and a trick-or-treat bag with a cat on it some other pumpkins in the foreground I really like that the eyes and the nose are flames there's one more box and this one is called Drac pumpkin head holding a little pumpkin bucket and looks like a bat on a stick with some toothpick fangs these are very unique I think there's one more figure that I actually purchased from eBay that kind of sparked that whole search for those figures I believe this is it yes this has the ESC logo on it this one says Skeleton Trick or Treater. And this is the one that originally caught my eye. Oh yeah. Yeah, this has to be my favorite. They're all amazing and unique, but this one is absolutely my favorite. It's the bones, it's the pumpkin he's holding. That one came from eBay, the rest came from ESC directly, but they are figures sculpted by C.R. McLennan, and the series is called Halloween County. There's a lot more than that, those are just the ones that I collected. Check it out if you're interested. All right, there's one more box that'll open up on the table, and then we'll get to the bigger boxes we'll do on the floor. I think this came from eBay. I'm really not sure what's in here. Let's find out. Subway and Little Caesars coupons. Oh, this is a bucket. This bucket came from Instagram. This is a super cool vintage bucket. It's in fantastic condition. The colors are still great. No cracks. The handle's still firmly attached. The paint looks really good. I purchased this from Instagram. I believe the account is called Ghouls and Goblins Halloween. But if I'm wrong, I'll put the correct one right here during the video. Welcome to the Horde. Well, that's the last of the boxes that I can open up on the table. I'm gonna move this out of the way, clean this up, and we'll get to the bigger boxes. And don't worry, all the packing material in this video is gonna be reused or recycled. This next skinny tall box is from eBay, if you couldn't tell by all that eBay tape all over it. Let's see what's inside. Looks like the tip of something good. Look at that. This is a white plastic unpainted blow mold. 
I do have an orange unpainted blow mold, but I, this will be my first white plastic unpainted blow mold. This is a witch holding a pumpkin. And this is a vintage 1994 blow mold by Union Products. This is a Union blow mold sculpted by Don Featherstone. I'm very excited to add an unpainted blow mold to the hoard. <laughs> Two holes for lights, one in the back of the head and one towards the butt area there. And there's the stamp on the bottom. This is rad. Okay, next is a very similarly sized box, also from eBay. This came from Salem, Oregon. It's considerably heavier than the last. This one is packed really well. I really appreciate when these blow molds are shipped really well packed. I have received some blow molds that have been absolutely destroyed during the shipping process. And it's always a sad day when you open up a, a vintage blow mold that's been crushed. And this is the witchy sister of the unpainted blow mold. This is the painted version of that blow mold. 1994 Union blow mold sculpted by Don Featherstone. Nice green face. This one's seen some better days. There's a lot of scuffing on the black paint at least. There you can see an unpainted blow mold and a painted blow mold. This one looks pristine. I don't think this ever had any trouble. This one probably got some fun use out of it. It's pretty scuffed up, but super rad to have both. Don Featherstone had some really amazing sculpts back when they were still making blow molds. Already two very cool blow molds. Let's see what's in this box. This came from Goodwill Auctions. You can shop in store at the Goodwills or the Goodwill outlets, but there is also an auction site for Goodwill where you can bid on things and they ship it to you. And the shipping prices are considerably lower than eBay, so check it out. This is also very well packed. This should be a PSA for blow mold shipping. It's in a box, it's covered in heavy duty bubble wrap, packed with paper. Nobody wants to see a vintage blow mold get destroyed. Wow, this looks amazing. I do not have this in my collection. Very happy to add it. Look at that. This is a vintage TPI blow mold. Wow, the eyes are super cool. I've never seen those like doll eyes in a blow mold before. The color still looks really good on this. There's some scuffing and some dirt and some wear, but this still looks amazing. No cracks. Wow. Oh, I spoke too soon. The bottom is busted, but this thing's still gonna display so well. And there's the stamp right on the bottom, TPI 1997. So this buzzard blow mold is from 1997. And it still looks great. You gotta see these eyes. It's like the eyes of a teddy bear. And there's the damage on the bottom. Sad, but it's really insignificant in my opinion. There is a light cord in there and there is a loose bulb rolling around. When we're all done, I'll see if I can turn this on. Next is another box from a Goodwill auction. This blow mold is also very well packed. This looks like a stack of pumpkins.
This is a vintage blow mold from Sunhill Studios from 1987. I have never seen one of these in such good condition. It looks like it was just made yesterday. The colors are still so bright. And there's just something about jack-o'-lanterns with yellow features that makes me so happy. It's like they popped right out of a Halloween animated special. This is in, in amazing condition. Here, let me wade through the popcorn ocean. I'm so happy to add these smiling jack-o'-lanterns to the hoard. What an amazing blow mold. There's a light cable intact and there is a bulb in there. When I get this cleaned up, we'll try and plug all these in and see how they work. And this is the last box in part two of the Halloween mail hall unboxing. This is another box from Goodwill auctions. These come out of Northern Illinois. Let's see what's inside. Nice, this is also packed so well. I gotta applaud Goodwill for at least their auctions and their shipping. Can't say much about their retail locations, but I really appreciate a well-packed blow mold. There is a light cable with a bulb attached, and let's see this blow mold. Look at that. Aside from being extremely filthy, this blow mold is in great shape. This is a vintage ghost blow mold from the 90s, I'm sure. I don't see any identifying marks on it, but what a rad find. It's a lot bigger than I thought it was. There is a UPC tag on the bottom that just says 24 inch Boo Ghost. Once this is cleaned up, it's going to be fantastic. So the bulb in the ghost blow mold was burnt out and the cable for the pumpkin stack was frayed and unsafe, but the vulture and the witch lit up beautifully. Some exceptional pieces of Halloween history joined the horde tonight. And that concludes part two of the Halloween mail haul. Across from me on my couch, I'm staring at a thrift store haul that's just waiting to be put in front of the camera, so stay tuned for that. If you enjoyed going through this mail haul with me, please give the video a like. And as always, Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.